just get started. Right. Okay, everyone. Um, welcome to our program to this evening um, about the Unconquered Seminoles. Um, I just want to go over a few things. Uh, my name is Alex Bratzos, and I am the Career Services Librarian at the Gail Borden Public Library in Elgin, Illinois. Well, tonight I would like to uh, introduce our guest speaker. Um, Gordon Wareham will be the presenter for tonight's program in honor of Native American Month, Native American Heritage Month. And he is the director of the Ata Thiki Museum, which is um, on Big Cypress in Southern Florida. And he's going to be here to um, not only play a, a little bit of music, as you just heard on the flute, but also talk about the uh, Native Americans, specifically the Seminole tribe, you know, about their culture, about their history. And hopefully we'll all get to know a little bit more about uh, this Native American tribe that is located in the state of Florida. Thank you, Gordon. Chihantamo, uh, Ishtango. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Gordon Oliver Warham. Like I said, I am the director for the Athotiki Museum located in the Big Cypress Reservation. And um, I wanna start off with uh, uh, some music. It sets the mood and uh, just gets everybody into the right frame of mind. And so I get the question asked all the time, what is this? What is the name of this instrument? And this is called the Native American flute. Uh, this is the Western style. It has six holes. The Eastern style will only have five holes. And I get this question uh, asked all the time also is, how do you play this instrument? And my response is one, at a, one note at a time. And so um, I'm gonna play a song for you. It's called Butterfly. And this, this, this song is just to represent how beautiful the sound of this instrument is. It's uh, it supposed to represent a caterpillar, you know, walking along a, a branch, turning into a cocoon, into a butterfly, and then fluttering in, and then the cycle starts over again. And I've, I learned the, how to play the flute back in uh, 2000. Uh, my cousin, William Cypress, um, who is my cousin. I am from the Panther clan and he's from the Panther clan. We have a clan system within our, our, our tribe and we get our clans through our mothers. We're a matriarchal society. And um, so my cousin William is playing the flute. He sounds like an angel when he plays. And he looks at me and he goes, hey, Ollie, you know, when you were in high school, you graduated first class, uh, first trumpet. And uh, you know, tr this is just a simple instrument. you know." So I picked it up. And like I said, when he, when he was playing it, it sounded like a, 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 an angel singing. And all you have to do is blow into it and you get a sound. And so that day I grabbed that flute and I blew into the, uh, into the flute and I got air. And uh, he kind of giggled a little bit. I said, wait, it's broken. So he picked up the flute and he played it again and it sounded like an angel. And he goes, here, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, try it again. There's nothing wrong with the flute. And so I grabbed the flute and I got nothing but air. He giggled and he said, you know what? You need to get your own voice. You need to get your own flute and find your own sound. Uh, you need to go to that place, what they call the eBay tribe and get your own flute. So that's what I did. Uh, I went on to eBay and they had a beginner's flute. Uh, and so I went online, bought the beginner's flute and for three hours a day for 30 days, I practiced one note. And I've seen people pick up this flute and play it like it was uh, a, a part of them and then just put it down. And I'm like, <gasps> all the effort and the time I've spent on playing this flute and somebody has a gift like that. I said, no, no, I, I, I would never ever put this on this flute again. So like I said, the song I'm gonna play for you is Caterpillar. It's just a simple scale song. It warms up my throat, but it just shows you how beautiful this instrument really is. And it just goes up and down the scales. Thank you. 
So like I said, that's a simple scale song going up and down the scales, but it shows the range of this flute and the uh, how beautiful, uh, rich sound comes from this flute. Um, there's a theory with coming with playing this flute. Uh, you become one with the flute. The, 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 you as the player, as a flutist, uh, give the, the flute its wind. It, you give it its breath. And in return, it gives you its voice. So it becomes one with you. And by doing that, you become one, one entity. So that is the Native American flute. So a little bit about the Seminole tribe of Florida. Um, and so we are on just not the Hollywood Reservation, Big Cypress Reservation, Bright Reservation, but we're also in Trail, uh, Tampa, Fort Pierce, uh, Immokalee, and Naples, Naples community. So we're about eight different communities out throughout the uh, South uh, Florida, uh, and each community has its own, uh, I guess, way of uh, living. Uh, in Hollywood, we are more of a, a city. We're surrounded by a city, uh, by different communities out in Big Cypress and Brighton. That's more of a rural area. And uh, for me, uh, I live in Hollywood. Um, I, I, I was raised on Holly, in the Hollywood Reservation, but my home is in Big Cypress. I feel more connected out there because it is part of the Everglades. Uh, it's uh, where I went and visit my grandpa on a weekly basis and my grandma and it's a, it's a special place. And so um, I'm gonna tell you a few stories and a, a, a few of our legends. And so the first story I'm gonna tell you is what we call the four brothers. Uh, the story, it has a name, and but I can't tell you the name because it's like saying the butler did it. And uh, so the storytellers have come together and we've discussed this, you know, we can't call it its original name. Um, we have to come up with a nickname for this story. And we have named it the four brothers. Now the first brother, the first brother is uh, very, very good looking, very, very strong. And uh, he's a great hunter. When he goes hunting, he can bring back the deer, the, the bear, the boar, uh, different animals uh, by himself in one day. He could feed a whole village by himself where ordinary men uh, would take uh, a hunting party of many men and go out for many days to uh, to gather enough uh, meat to come back to share with the, the families, the, the, the villagers. Um, so they said that this, this, this man is, is a great hunter. Uh, brother number two, just as good looking, just as strong, but this brother, he's a great fisherman. When he goes fishing, uh, he can uh, get enough fish, uh, gather enough fish to feed the whole village, not just for himself or his family, but the whole village where it takes many men, many days uh, to go out there and use nets to uh, bring in uh, the food of the fish uh, to bring back to the villagers. But the, the brother number two, he could do it in one day by himself. Brother number three, the brother number three, it, he's a, 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 a just as good looking, just as strong, and, but he's a great carpenter. Uh, he can go and he can build a chiki, that's to us a house, by himself in one day, uh, where it takes uh, ordinary men many days, many uh, hours, and, and, and many uh, 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 men to come and to bring the supplies to build a chiki by himself many, many days. But he can do it in one day. Now, these three brothers, these three brothers, uh, they, they, they are great in war. They've never lost in battle. They don't know the word fear. They have never been defeated in, in their lives. So they're great warriors. And the women, the women from around the world have come and they want to be wives to these men because they know how great these men are, these, four, these three brothers. And they know if, if they have uh, children with them, they will be as great as these, these men. I'm forgetting somebody. Ah, brother number four. Brother number four is the youngest out of the four of, of the four brothers, and um, he's normal in every way possible. He's no more looking, no more strength. He does no more things, no more no no more chores. Unlike his brothers, who do all these great things, he's just normal. And like a normal person, after a hard days of work of doing his chores, you know, he gets tired and he sits down and he, he's a daydreamer. 
he loses his thoughts in his in his dreams and, and during the day and he sits down there and he just starts to rest but he lo loses his thoughts and you know people come by and they, they look at brother number four and they look at him and say you know why are you being so lazy look at your brothers the brothers you're they're doing these great these great things why can't you be like your brothers and do these great things why why are you like so why are you so lazy and like i said the, he him being the youngest of the four brothers uh he's always uh been compared against them you know it's his mom his dad his aunt, aunties and his uncles his uh older cousins his uh, uh older aunts and uncles his grandparents and grandmothers the, the elders they they did just tease him and, and compare him against his brother. It's not fair. It's not fair. So brother number four decides that, you know, I'm going to run away from home. I'm going to run away from home. And when I'm gone, they're going to, they, they're going to know how special I was, how, 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 how much I meant to this village, how much I meant to this, my family. When I'm gone, they're going to miss me. And so that's what he did. He decided that he was going to run away far away. But, you know, he got through some tickets, he's some bushes and through a stream and he ended up being on his favorite log. And he sits on his log and he starts to cry and a little ant comes to him. Now get to more, what's, what's wrong? Why, why, are you why are you crying on this beautiful day that the creator has given to us, why? And so the uh, brother number four starts to explain to the ant that, you know, when, when when, uh, when he's with his family and, and he gets compared against his brothers and they're doing these great things and they, people making fun of him and they're comparing against the great things and, you know, they, keep, they call me lazy, they, they call me daydreamer. It's not fair, that's not fair. So the little ant says, well, I'm going to teach you a song. I'm going to teach you the song of the ant. And when, when you learn that song, you're going to become an ant, you're going to join my colony. And when you join my colony, you know, you see that everybody, we don't compare anybody against we all have our place. And so that's what Brother Number Four did. He, he learned the song of the ant. He sang the song of the ant. He became an ant and for 30 days, he joined that colony, you know, and he, he helped that colony when it was raining. He secured the walls to make sure it wasn't flooded. When they were invaded by other ants, another colony, he defended that colony. You know, nobody compared against him against any other ants. But after 30 days, after 30 days, um, you know, uh, he started missing his mom, he's missing his dad. He's missing his brothers, he's missing his people. He wants to go home, he wants to go back and he wants to be human. So he goes up to the ant, hey, I wanna go home. I wanna go home, you know, I, 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 I miss my people. So that little ant says, well, I'm gonna teach you the song of the human so you can go home. You know, you helped us a, enough, you know, a lot. You know, I hope you appreciate your stay, but I'll teach you the song of the human. So that's what happened. Brother number four, he, he learned the song of the human. He sang the song of the human. He became human and he went running back into his village. And the first person he met was his dad. Now his dad knew he was gone for 30 day, days, and, but his dad also was a proud man, you know, a proud person. And he didn't want to show any hurt inside. He didn't want to, he just wanted to be stoic. And so when his son came to him, brother number four came to him and said, dad, 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 did you miss me? Did you miss me? And then the dad went, miss you, miss you. I didn't know you were gone. What are you talking about, miss you? Well, I was out there being an ant. You know, I was out there uh, 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 learning how to be an ass. I learned a song and, and I was an ant out there and I joined a colony and, and I was out there for 30 days. 30 days? Out there playing, daydreaming? Is that what you were doing? You were out there playing? What about your responsibilities? What about your, 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 your chores? You know, you got responsibility to your people. You got responsibility to, to your family. If you're not doing your responsibilities and that, that, that burden is now pushed onto somebody else. So the father started picking up these, these, these stones and started throwing at brother number four. It's hitting in his head, hitting in his back. He turns around, he goes running back in the woods. He goes back to his, 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 his log, his favorite log, and he sits on that log and he begins to cry. This bird, this little bird came, sat next to him. Now get to Mo. What's wrong? Why, why are you crying on this beautiful day that the creator has given to us? And so brother number four starts to explain about what his dad said about not taking his life serious. You know, it's not fair, it's not fair. 
You know, they compare me against my brothers all my life. It's not fair. So that little bird says, well, I'm going to teach you a song. I'm going to teach you a song with a bird. And you, you can become a bird. And, and you know what? We have no responsibilities. All we do is fly all over the world, singing songs, making people happy, and eating bugs. That's all we do. And brother number four thought about it. He goes, that's a good idea. And so the little bird taught him the song of the bird. He learned the song of the bird. He sang the song of the bird. And he became a, a bird. And for 30 days, he traveled the world. He went all over the world and went all over, listening to different sounds and different people, different villagers, different nations, all over the world. But as he was flying over the world, he looked down and he saw the villagers. And he realized something his dad was saying. He could see them walking around and they looked like little ants. And it reminded him of that colony that each one had their part, each one had their play within the colony to make that colony strong. And he realized what his dad was saying about responsibilities. You know, he, he started missing his dad, he started missing his mom, missing his brothers, and he wanted to go home. So he found that little bird and he goes, I wanna go home. I, I miss my people, I miss my mom, my dad, my brothers, I wanna go home. So that little bird says, okay, I'm gonna teach you a song. I'm gonna teach you a song of the human so you can go home. And that's what he did. He learned the song of the human. He sang the song of the human and he became human and he went running back into his village. And the first person he saw was his mom. Now his mom knows he's gone for uh, 60 days, two months, he's been gone. And she looks at him and she starts to cry. And where have you been? Where have you been, my son? And he goes running to his mom. He goes, mom, I was out there in the woods. Now I was an ant and I was a bird. Ant, bird, what are you talking about? You were out there playing? My heart hurts, my heart hurts. I thought you were out there injured. I thought you were out there captured. I thought you were out there dead. And you're out there playing as an a, 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 a ant, a, a, as a bird? You know, if you're not gonna take your life serious, then nobody's gonna take your life serious. I want grandbabies, grandbabies. If you're not gonna take your life serious, then the, the women, they won't take you serious and I can't have grandbabies. I want grandbabies. And with that, she starts picking up little stones and throwing at brother number four. It starts hitting him in his head, hitting him in his back and he goes running back into the woods. He finds his, uh, his, his log and his favorite log and he sits on his log and he's crying and he's crying and a male deer come to him, a buck comes to him and asks him, Nugget Tomo, why, why are you crying on this beautiful day that the, the creator has given to you? Why? And he starts to compare, tell his, what his mom said about you know, not taking his life serious. And nobody's going to take his life serious if he doesn't take his life serious. About his dad and about responsibilities, about his brothers being compared against his brothers and being about the other people making fun of him. It's not fair. It's not fair. And the deer says, well, I'm going to teach you a song of the deer. And when you can become a deer, I'll teach you to run really, really fast and drip really, really high and walk with grace and silence. And by doing that, you're going to impress a doe. And you can have all the doe babies you want. That's a good idea. So that's what happened. He learned the song of the deer. He, he sang the song of the deer. And he became a deer. And for 30 days, he learned how to run really, really fast, jump really, really high, and walk with grace and silence. But after 30 days, he started thinking about what his mom said, his dad said, he's missing his brother, he's missing. He wants to go home. He wants, he wants, he wants a human wife. He wants human child. He wasn't, he doesn't want a deer. So he goes for that, to that, that, that buck and goes, I want I'm going to go home. And so the deer said, okay, I'm going to teach you the song of the human and you can, become, he can go home. So he sang the song of the human. He, he became human. He went running home. And as he entered his village, there was nobody there. So he's at the back inside of his village. And at the front, there's a chiki chobi, the big chiki, the council chiki, the government chiki. This is the chiki that they make all the important uh, decisions for the community, for the tribe, for the village. And so he's at the back and he's making his way to the front of the village, to the chiki chobi. And as he's getting closer to the front, there's a sound. Like I said, there's nobody there, but there's a sound, there's a rumble. He could feel a vibration in his body. And he's making his way to the Chikichobi. He's at the backside. And as he makes his way to the front of the, of the, to the village, 
there's a bear. There's an old bear. It's a huge bear. Its claws are black, stained in blood. And the bear is asleep. And he's laying against the Chikichobi. The Chiki uh, has uh, mud walls. And there's a door. And the, the bear is leaning against that, that, that door, sleeping. And where he's hearing is the rumble. is the snore from that bear. It's so loud. And it vibrates the, the whole area. But he could see around the area, there was a great battle, broken spears, broken knives, broken shields. You know, there was a great war that happened here. And, 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 and brother number four just freezes and he starts to shake. And when he starts to shake, his jury starts to shake and make sounds. The bear wakes up. He opens one of his eyes and just stares at brother number four. He takes a mighty breath and blows out. And it's so powerful. It picks up brother number four and throws him into the woods. Brother, brother number four gets up and he runs. He runs. He knows that there's a nearby village. And he goes to that village and he goes to, to see what happened. If there's any sound and any news that he can, he can hear. And as he enters that village, he sees all his people there, his aunties, his, his uncles, his mom, his dad, his grandparents. He sees his brothers are, are just laying on the floor uh, in, in, a, in, in, in balled up in, 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 a, in a fetal position, just, just holding and they're crying. And he's hearing the sounds of his villagers, the, the story of that bear coming into, into the village and those three brothers going to war with that bear. They fought the bear long enough so everybody can, could escape except for these two young women. The two young women were trapped in that Chikichobi and they're trying to convince those, those three brothers to go and, and fight that bear to go rescue those two young women. But like I said, the, this is the first time the, the brothers have been defeated. They have fear in their heart now. They have fear in their heart. They know the word defeat and they're scared. They can't move because this is the first time they, they understand that word. They realize brother number four is in, in, in the, with among them. And so they start asking him, you know, what were you doing when the bear came in? What happened to you? And so he starts explaining about being a deer about being a bird, about being an ant. And they said, what, you were out there daydreaming? You were out there daydreaming and we were under attack? You know, and they started blaming him for the, them having to leave their homes, leave the village. They, they start blaming number four. You know, if it, was, if it was one more spear, one more knife, one more arrow, that could have been the difference between uh, us leaving or, 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 or us uh, staying. It's because of you. And all the, the all his family started picking up stones and started hitting, uh, throwing at brother number four. It starts hitting in his head, hitting his, hitting his back. Brother number four goes running back into the woods. He goes to his log and he sits on his log and he starts to cry. The deer, the bird, the ant, they come to him. Nagatomo, why are you crying on this beautiful day that the creator has given to us? Why? So he starts explaining about the bear about his brothers being defeated and how his family and the rest of the villagers are blaming him. You know, they, they're saying that, you know, I, I'm just a daydreamer, I'm nobody, you know. They're blaming me for the defeat. This, this, this is not fair, this is not fair. And they say to him, think, think, you know what to do, you know what to do, think. And this idea came to brother number four. He gets up, he goes back to that second village and he goes to his mom and dad. He goes, I'm going to go rescue those two young women. And they start laughing at him. And, and the villagers are laughing at him. His family is laughing at him. And they ask the question, who are you? Who are you? You're not nobody. You're that daydream. You're the lazy one. Your brothers, they're the great ones. Who are you? I'm the one that's going to go rescue those two young women. And they laugh at him. Whatever, daydreamer, just go. Leave us again. Go play. And with that, he turns around and he leaves the villagers and he can hear them laughing at him. He makes his way to back to the end of the, his village again. And he, he sings the song of the deer quietly. 
he makes his way to that Chikichobi. He sings the song of the bird and he flies upon the roof of the Chikichobi. He sings the song of the ant and he makes his way to the thatch roof, through the ribs, down to the legs of, of the Chikichobi and to those two young women. He sings the song of the human. He becomes human. And they're about to scream. He goes, shh, shh, I'm here to rescue you. And they listen to him. And they look at him. And they said, who are you? You're that nobody. You're the daydream. Where's your brothers? Where's, your, where's the great ones? You know, when they were fighting, you know, they, they ran away screaming like little girls. Where are they? Where are the great ones? And he goes, I'm here to rescue you. I, I, I would teach you these songs and so we can get out of here. And so that's what he did. He taught them these three songs. And the first song that they, they, they sang was the song of the ant. They made the ways to the leg of the Chikichobi, all the way up to the ribs, through the thatch on top of the Chikichobi. The next song they sang was the song of the bird. And the two, two young women did not know how to fly yet. So he tells them, just open your wings and float all the way down and that's what they did they opened the wings and they floated to the ground the next song they sang was a song of the deer quietly with grace and silence they walked to the end of their village and when they got to the end of the village they ran as quick as possible you know they were making their way to that second uh, village brother number four stayed behind just enough just in case that bear woke up and gave chase, he would take him into another direction because he was quick, he was fast, but he would take him to another direction to uh, keep them from going to the second village. So those two young women, when they get to that village, they sang the songs of the, of, of the humans and they became humans. And they entered that village and they were, the, the people were surprised and they, 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 they come and, and they, they want to know how they escaped. And they told him that brother number four, number, brother number four came, he, 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 he came to us and he rescued us. Brother number four, as he's coming to the village, he sings the song of the human and he became a human. And as he enters the village, they start praising him for his courage. They praised him for rescuing these two young women. And this is how the story gets its name. So these two young women come to him and they said, because you, you, you rescued us, you defeated your fear, we wanna be wives to you. And this is how the story gets its name, how the man got two wives. And so the story is a beginning of, uh, of, of this, 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 this is a beginning story for this, for this man, for brother number four in our legends. His story, uh, he, he becomes a very, very powerful medicine man, a very powerful medicine man for his people. But because of what he learned today, he learned that his knowledge that he needed to pass on to the next generations. So not only was he a powerful medicine man, he was also a great leader because his brothers, they had greatness within uh, the physical realm. His greatness was actually his mind. And he can pick up very easily uh, songs and medicine. And, and, but like I said, to him, it was more important to share that information, that knowledge and pass it on to the next generation. So this is a story of the four brothers. It's kind of hard doing a Zoom because I'm only looking at a blank screen right now. I usually like feedback. So how am I doing out there? Oh, that sounds good. Thank you so much. That's definitely an interesting story that I believe probably no one on this call has heard before. Um, uh, it looks like, yeah, uh, we, I can't see all the um, attendees myself in this webinar format, so it is a little bit harder um, to see everyone. But um, let me check our... our uh, we have some thumbs up going on. Awesome. <laughs> So I'm going to play another uh, song for you uh, since it, a special day just did happen for our country. It's uh, Veterans Day. Um, I got the honor to play taps for my, uh, my people uh, for the, at the our veterans ceremonies. And so uh, I'm going to play a song called uh, Everglades Warrior. Uh, this song is uh, in honor for my uh, late Uncle Billy Cypress, who was the uh, founding director for the Athoski Museum. Um, he 
he was a major in the army, U.S. Army, and his, his service was in Korea. Uh, so he told me he never talked about his service. He never, ever talked about his service, uh, except for once. Um, he told me that w when his service was done and he was coming home, uh, he was on a boat and they flew him in a plane. Uh, when he got home, he got into a car and then onto a bus and says, it wasn't until he stepped in home on the Big Cypress Reservation and he heard that, that, that breeze that he felt like he was safe. And, you know, I, I, I started imagining what the sounds he, he heard, you know, him leaving the cities and coming home and, and you know, providing that freedom that we have. And, uh, you know, that, 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 that pride that he had for serving. And uh, so... I created a song called Everglades, uh, Everglades Warrior. Uh, you'll hear some chirps in it, uh, some bird sounds, but if you hear, there's something called honor beats. Uh, those are within powwow. You'll hear honor beats on the drum. That is to give honor to our veterans and those who are served. So those um, who, are, who have served, those who are serving, and those who have given us everything. Shanabish Mado, thank you. And this song goes out to you. Thank you for that. I, I hope everyone was able to hear the audio. I know um, I think a few few notes were kind of fading in and out for, for me. So I'm, I'm hoping that's just my computer, but um, I definitely could hear a good good part of that song. Awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna tell you my favorite story. Um, it's called the box turtle versus the rabbit. How many sort of the story of the tortoise and the hare? Have you heard the story? I'm, I I only can conversate with one person. So, uh, the story that most people know of the, the of the great race, tortoise and the hare, is actually originated from the Greeks. Uh, most people don't know that, and uh, so I guess it's how different civilizations, different people, different groups of families have looked at nature and have come up with morals for their young ones. So, in our story, we call it the box turtle versus the rabbit, and in our stories the rabbit is a trickster. Uh, he, he's our bad guy in our stories. And I was asked, you know, is, is, is trickster meaning like a clown, like a carnival clown, 
one who brings humor? And the answer is no. In our terminology, is a trickster is a bad guy. Uh, he, he steals, he, he, he lies, he, he bullies, he's even killed. And that's who the rabbit is in our stories. Uh, he's our bad guy. And he's in a lot of our stories because we want to teach our kids how not to be and what not to do. So this is one of his stories. Uh, the rabbit, he's hopping along a path one day and he comes, he comes, he comes upon a group of box fiddles. And he looks at those box fiddles and he begins to laugh. So, look, 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 the critter, he gives you that hard, heavy shell. And the rabbit, he goes over to the box stores and he starts banging on their shells. That's so funny. You know what, you know what, you know what? That, that shell, that shell is so heavy. It probably take you one day to take one step. But the creator, the creator, he gave me the gift to speed. I'm the quickest, I'm the fastest. Now watch this, watch this, ready, ready, ready? Did you see it? Did you see it? Do it one more time. Watch, watch, watch. Ready, ready? Did you see it? I just went around the world twice and you probably didn't take one step. That's so funny. <laughs> and you know what? You know, the creator, the creator, he was having such a good time with you, making you. He made you all the same. So you're all funny looking and you're all slow. Now the box turtles, the box turtles, they didn't like being made fun of because nobody likes being made fun of. So the box turtles, they turned to the rabbit. They said, rabbit, this is his gift to us, the creator. He made us all the same. So when we can, when we come together, we can come with any solution to any problem. By doing that, we can defeat any foe. Well, the rabbit, he didn't want to listen. He didn't want to learn. They say, it don't matter. You're all funny looking. And he goes hopping along. Now, like I said, the rabbit has been given the gift of speed. He's the quickest, he's the fastest. And uh, he wants to race somebody. He needed to race somebody. So he goes over to, to the, 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 the Panthers. Panthers, let's race. And they say, no. He goes over to the, the bear, the bears. Bears, let's race. They said, no. He goes to the deer. Deer, let's race. And they say, no. But the box fiddles, they box fiddles, they heard this. And they came up with a plan. And so when the rabbit, he's hopping along that path, they call out to him, rabbit, rabbit, come here. And he does. And they said, rabbit, we want to challenge you to a race. And Rabbit goes, you want to race me? You want to race me? They said, yes, tomorrow by the big bend by the three hills. Early in the morning, we want to race you. Sure enough, next morning, before the sun comes up, box turtles there, rabbits there. And that rabbit, he gets into that low, low runner sense. Now, if anybody's seen the Olympics, they call them the sprints. You know, and the, the runners, what they, call, what they call getting into the blocks. So that's what the rabbit did. He gets into that low, low runner stance. And as the sun breaks the horizon, boom, they take off. Well, the rabbit does. He leaves that box through in his, in, in, in it behind him. And the rabbit, he's running along that path. <laughs> I'm beating you, I'm beating you. <laughs> and the rabbit, he's running along that path. He's going around that big bend. He's about to go to the first hill, but he stops. Because ahead of him is that box turtle. He's about halfway up the hill. And the rabbit, he looks behind him. There's no one there. And the rabbit, he starts to scratch his, his head. No, this can't be. This can't be. The creator, he gave me the gift of speed. I'm the quickest. I'm the fastest. This can't be. So the rabbit, he starts to pound his feet against the ground. And boom, like a jet rocket, he goes flying up the hill. He spins that box turtle on the shelf. He goes up the hill, goes over the hill, goes down the hill, goes into the little valley. He's about to go sick of the hill. But he stops because ahead of him is that box turtle. He's about two thirds up that hill. The rabbit, he looks behind him. There's no one there. And the rabbit, he starts to start scratch his head and he goes, No, this can't be. This can't be. I'm the quickest. I'm the fastest. This can't be. The creator, he gave me the kids of speed. This can't be. So the rabbit, he starts to pound his feet against the ground. And boom, like a jump, okay, he goes flying up the hill, he just spins that box on the shelf. He goes up the hill, goes over the hill, goes down the hill, goes into the little gully. He's about to the third or final hill, but he stops. Because ahead of him is that box hill. He's almost at the top of the hill. He's almost at the finish line. And the rabbit goes, oh, this can't be, this can't be. I'm the quickest, I'm the fastest, this can't be. The creator, 
he gave me the gift of speed. This can't be. So the rabbit, he starts to pound his feet against the ground. No faster, a little harder. And boom, I can jump off me, he's flying up the hill. Now they say, they say that man was first to break the sound barrier, but it's a lie. The ra rabbit, he broke the sound barrier that day. And the rabbit, he's running up that hill. Ah! You know what happened? The boxer don't be him by nose. And the rabbit's all winded. It's Gabby, it's Gabby. I'm supposed to be quickest. I'm supposed to be the fastest. Gabby. And so the rabbit, he found himself a big oak tree. And he lays himself against that oak tree and he goes to sleep. For the rest of that morning. For the rest of that night. For the rest of the next morning. And he wakes up. Oh! And I know, I know some of the, the parents know this terminology. It's called major bedhead. And the rabbit, his hair is all tangled and twisted and knotted up. And there's leaves in it and there's twigs in it. And the rabbit is trying to get his hair nice and neat. And, and, and animals are coming by. They're laughing at the rabbit. They're teasing a the rabbit. And they say, rabbit, you know, we always knew you good for a laugh. And they're making fun of the rabbit and, and they're teasing the rabbit. And the, the rabbit, he doesn't look like being made fun of because nobody likes being made fun of. But this happens for the rest of the day until the deer, the deer are very, very serious. And they said, rabbit, you know, you weren't beat by one box of them. You were beat by four box of those. <gasps> they lied, they cheated. He didn't beat me. I'm to the quickest. I'm to the fastest. And so the rabbit, he goes fighting. He, he goes over to those, those box turtles. He finds those box turtles. He goes to them. You lied. You cheated. You didn't beat me. I'm to the quickest. I'm to the fastest. And with that, the box turtles, they turned to the rabbit and said, rabbit, in the race, you used the gift to create a gift to you. And that was a gift of speed. In the race, we used the gift to create a gift to us. And But that, that's by looking like each other. And we told you, rabbit. When we come together, we can come with any solution to any problem. And by doing that, we defeat any foe. And because of that, rabbit, we outthunk you and we beat you. And this is how the box turtles beat the rabbit. Now I need everybody to go. Tuh, 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 tuh. It's a similar thing. I can't tell you why we do this. I haven't been given permission. I've just been told that it's very important we do this. It's just what we call a spitting story. And so uh, this story was told to me by my Aunt Carol Cypress, who was this story then was passed down to uh, from her or from from a, a gentleman called Grandpa George Billy, and he said this story is thousands of years old, and that this story uh, helped the Seminole uh, people. Um, my my family's our our our, our her heritage or our, our lineage or history. Uh, we talk about we have stories from Mississippi, from uh, Louisiana, all the way up to North Carolina, and these these families fled different wars and they went into Florida, North Florida, and then fled into South Florida, meeting the indigenous tribes that were still remaining uh, uh, here in, in Florida. And we found each other. And we're taught through these stories that when you have an abundance, uh, you share it. When you have nothing, you share it. And this is what the story uh, tells us to do. And because of this, these beliefs, uh, these different families from different, uh, different tribes, different languages, uh, different cultures, uh, we found that those common bonds and we united as a people. And it was actually the, the United States that called us Seminoles. So we took that word to identify us and who we are. That is who, who we are, not who other people. We found us. We found uh, us uh, here in, in Florida. I have a saying is that we are not part of Florida history. We are not part of Florida's past. We are Florida. We have always been here by different names, by different groups, by different tribes, but our history is here. Uh, we are here now. We are present here. We, we're going to be here in the future. Um, we are a part of Florida. We are Florida. And so because of these lessons that are in our stories that we pass from generation to generations, these are the lessons that we're te teaching our next generation. Uh, like I said, this was passed on from my Aunt Carol Cypress from a gentleman named George, uh, Grandpa George Billy. I 
You want one more song or you want Q&A? Does anyone have an opinion? You can put your, let me remind everyone, you can put in your uh, comments in the chat box. If you want to hear another song or if you want to go to questions and answers. I think I saw a thumbs up, but um, looks like song, someone says. <laughs> I, I will play my last song. So the song I'm going to play for you is called Tiger Song. It's not because of the animal, the tiger. It's because of a woman named Miss Winifred uh, Tiger. And um, she was Cherokee and she moved down here to Florida and she married uh, one of my elders. Uh, he was a middle. And she became the educational director for the Samoa Tribe of Florida. And a lot of my elders, and even today, owe their education to her. There were stories of uh, them trying to skip school, uh, go through thickets, through woods, through streams, through rivers, through uh, 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 kind of uh, ditches. And when they got to the other side, there she was with the door of a car wide open saying, okay, boys, it's time to go to school. So education was key to her. And uh, I say my education, I got a, a college degree because of her, uh, she, her mentoring ship and, uh, and her making sure that you know, education came first. And so uh, in this story, she's 85 years old and uh, I would go to her house and I would play different sounds for her, different songs for her and whatever she liked, she would nod her head. But if she didn't like, she would shake her head and it meant to try something else. So she became my muse. And so I would go to her house about three o'clock, almost on a regular basis, play three and a half hours and go and visit her. And one day I'm playing my last song and her son, Mike Tiger, who was the treasurer of our tribe at the time, uh, comes into the house and he jumps on the sofa. And as I'm playing my song, my last song, I almost put him asleep. Uh, I finished my song, I started packing up to go home he wakes up, he goes, hey, 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 Ollie, uh, Ollie, 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 uh, you need to play me a song. It's been a very, very long day and, and I, I need a song so I can go to sleep. Uh, Mike, it's 6.30. I just want to go home. I'm tired. I just want to eat. I want dinner that time. I'm starving. No, 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 you don't understand. I got a headache and I need one more song for the road. And uh, yeah, I need you to play one more song for me. And the song came to me and uh, I played it for Mr. Mike Tiger. And I put him asleep. And I put Miss Winifred asleep. And I put her cat asleep. And I put her precious pit bull asleep. I quietly pack up and I leave through the side door. And I'm three houses, I live three houses down from them. So I'm walking home and I look up in the sky. I said, on this day, on this day, I put four tigers asleep. So this is how it gets this, this name, Tiger Song.
Shinabish, Mendo, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I think we might have a question here. Let's see here. Uh, go to the Q&A. All right. Uh, the first question we have is how many are in your clan and what is your favorite celebration? Oh, okay. And so our clan system uh, is from the, the, the women's side. We get our clans from our moms. And there's eight clans, uh, Panther, Bear, Snake, Big Town, Otter, Wind, and I'm forgetting two of them right now and they're gonna kill me for doing that. <laughs> um, but we are the biggest clan of, of all of them. Uh, we're about a thousand people within my clan system. Um, I think there's, I think the bird and uh, otters are next, about 800 to 700 uh, members in each clan. Uh, my my uh, tribe is about 4,200 plus right now in our clan. The Mikisukis are about 900. So uh, there's about about 5,000 Mikisukis and Seminoles within the, uh, uh, I guess, uh, South Florida. Oh, and my favorite holiday, Halloween. <laughs> I love Halloween. Are there any other questions? Let's see, please again put your questions in the Q and A box, and I'll be able to to see them. I was just going to ask a question. I I know that when I when I uh, visited the museum, I know that um, there's a so the Seminoles I, I believe speak in two different languages that are closely related. I think one is more. Mikasuki and the other one is more of a Muscogee Creek, if I recall. Could you tell us a little bit about, about that? Okay, so let's start. We, we have actually three languages in our, our tribe, one being uh, uh, Elipangi, which is the Mikasuki, Ishtapangi, which is the Creek, Muscogee Creek, and the third one is Bad English. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's, the, that's the three languages that we, we speak in, in, uh, in, our, in our tribe. And uh, most of the Mikasuki speakers are Big Cypress, Hollywood, uh, Amalfi area, Naples area. The Creek influence of our tribe is from uh, around uh, Okeechobee uh, area, Brighton, Okeechobee, all the way to Fort Pierce. So this, the Northern tribes, uh, that's where they, those families kind of, uh, during the Seminole Wars, that's where they kind of uh, formed their camps. Um, both are, uh, are are kind of have a unique style of talking. Uh, like I said, I'm from the Mikasuki uh, influence. So when we say, hello, how are you? It's Chihantamo. Uh, it's a very fluid language. Uh, the Creek is uh, Ishtongo. It's a very direct language when they, they, they speak. Um, both are um, like most of our medicine songs, most of our celebration songs are in Creek. Um, so like I said, it's a very direct language. It's a very beautiful language where uh, uh, the uh, uh, Mikasuki language is a very fluid language, but a very descriptive language. You describe things that are happening instead of saying uh, what something is. Great, thank you for telling us that. Um, it looks like we do have another question in the chat. Um, and this question comes from Sandy. She's asking our their children's books of your stories oh yes uh one one of our um uh, my elders uh and it was one of my neighbors uh betty may uh she created uh, a book of seminal stories that can be found at the Athopica museum website uh it's and that's what it's called seminal tales and um uh, she actually has two books on on seminal legends uh they're uh both being uh i guess um the, the, I guess the paintings were done by Guy Labrie. Uh, so it's an actual beautiful book that, that, that was created. All right, thank you. Let's see if there's uh, another question here. And I just remind everyone, if you wanted to, to speak, you can raise your hand and we can, we can have you ask a question through the audio feed if you prefer to do that. Let's see here, just checking our 
chat boxes and everything. I don't see another question at the moment. Does anyone else have any questions or comments for Gordon while he's here? Let's see. There's another question, Alex. Oh, sure. Yeah, Sadi, could you go ahead and read that one? Yeah. Um, uh, Gordon, what is your main sustenance, it says? <laughs> David's asking. Main substances? No, uh, substance. Substance. Like food, food? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that's what they're asking. Well, they, they, they put me on a strict diet of chicken, so. <laughs> but... Um, but if you're talking about traditional foods, uh, you know, we do have the gator, which is quite delicious. And like I said, one of the things that we do have is the garfish, um, which is, if, if made properly and cooked properly, it almost tastes like lobster. Uh, it, you can only, only meat you can actually eat from the, the, the garfish is the backbone. And it's a very, very white meat. And like I said, it, it, it's, it has to be cooked properly uh, for it to, kind of come off uh, cleanly, but when it does, it has, it's like I said, it's a white meat and it, it, it has the texture of a, of a lobster. So that's one of my favorite uh, uh, fishes to eat. Very interesting, yeah, and I, I know when I was in uh, Florida, I did try um, alligator meat uh, once at least, maybe twice, and it, it was pretty good, yeah. Um, but I've never had garfish before. Okay, we have another question. Um, it says that your music is lovely. Can you point us at some links or sources to hear more? Uh, I don't. I don't have any music, uh, but I have a great friend that uh, uh, plays uh, flute. He came down for our AIAC, our, our American Indian Art Celebration. His name is Tony Duncan. I believe he has some art out, uh, some CDs out there. And basically he's the only person I listen to. He is so clean when he performs that, you know, it, like I said, it sounds breathtaking when he performs. So uh, if anybody would ask me who I would recommend listening to or getting a CD from, Tony Duncan is, is the person I would point in that direction. All right. Let's see, are there any other questions? Questions or comments? Yeah. Not seeing anything in the Q and A. Well, Gordon, I want to thank you again too. That was a lovely presentation. Hope everyone enjoyed the program. Oh, David just asked, what do you celebrate? I celebrate life. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, um, I, I get this question about Thanksgiving. But sometimes I'll go really quickly into Thanksgiving. Um, do we celebrate Thanksgiving? And the answer is yes. Um, uh, we don't celebrate the story of Thanksgiving. Uh, if you knew the history behind it, uh, it's, it's really uh, a fable, what's being taught. But the understanding of what Thanksgiving represents because we would celebrate something called the Big Berry Moon. And at this time is the last of the harvest. And this is where the men would go out and, and check on their families, their clan families, and then would they would check on their uh, wives' clans to make sure that um, everybody had supplies for the winter, that everybody had their um, provisions. And this was, you know, one of the last times they would meet for uh, the year because the coldness would be coming in. So they want to make sure everybody had enough supplies to get through the through the through the, uh, the winter months. But this would be a a, 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 a winter, a, I guess, a winter harvest. But it's the last of picking all the, the fruits and making sure and to celebrate each other, to come together as a family or friends. And this is the time that they would make sure that everybody was taken care of. So under that celebration and having the same thought process of what Thanksgiving should re represent for, for families to come together, be thankful 
to whatever creation or creator uh, you worship uh, and to celebrate each other for just to be alive. You know, it's a blessing to be alive. It's a blessing to have family, to have friends and just to come together and to celebrate life. So when I get the question, do I celebrate Thanksgiving? Yes, I do. Cause I am thankful to be here on this earth celebrating uh, my heritage and I can actually uh, celebrate uh, other people also. Thank you so much. Yeah, we really appreciate hearing that, you know, just a few days uh, before Thanksgiving here. And um, I think, you know, so many people, they, they don't necessarily get to hear from from Native peoples and Native Americans. And it's really great to, to be able to, to hear from the different uh, diverse corners of our, our country and, and hear from from Florida. Um, and also reflect upon, you know, Native Americans here in, in Illinois too, as we, um, we think about Thanksgiving and we really appreciate you coming on and, and doing this from over a thousand miles away. And um, I hope everyone enjoyed the presentation. If there's any final question, um, we can maybe take one last question. What, what is your tribe involved in the revolution? And, um, the answer is yes. Uh, we fought on basically on both side, sides of the war. The Seminole uh, people did fight on both sides of the war, um, north and south, uh, because depending on what family fought was, they were promised different things. And then when the war was over, those that were alliance to the south, southern, they were taken to Oklahoma and those that were uh, allies to the North was taken to Oklahoma. And so those that decided to uh, keep out of the war and uh, stay into the South, uh, South Florida and hide in Everglades, that is the remnants of who still uh, are still in, the, uh, in Florida. So yes, the Seminole people, what they call the Seminole Nation is that's basically where they are located now. And like I said, both sides made promises to those, uh, those Seminoles. And when it came down to the winners, uh, United States told those Seminoles because your others, other people uh, fought, or the, your other brethren fought against us, any promises that we made to you are void and null. And they took them to Oklahoma. So yes, the Seminole people did fight in, the, uh, um, in, that, war, in that war, but they were, the, the, the promises were made where they were taken to Oklahoma. Thank you for giving us a little bit more on the history.